We're live. I am an infinite Miss Rhoda in your life. As I promised, we're here. Um, and the purpose of us being here is to share what's going on um, out here in the 757. And it may seem to you to be awkward, but these things goes on in many people's households. Um, these things happen across the board and a lot of people that don't know what goes on behind the scenes, but it goes on. We have people out here really hurting, guys. Um, a lot of us may find it funny. Some of us may find it serious. Some may find it crazy. But everybody have an opinion. And it's, it's fair for you to have your own opinion. But I want you to desensitize yourself and get sensitized with this situation. Because what if it's you and what if it's your children? Um, I want you to sit back and, re and relax. Um, this young lady want to share with us her story. What she's going through, she said COVID-19 is not the only thing that came into her household and destroyed it. Another woman, also her husband. Um, she have three kids. Um, she do want to uh, have two of her children on camera. This is what she wanted. And I made sure I asked the kids before they came on if they wanted to be up here as well. Um, two of the kids decided they wanted to be up here. One decided he don't want to be on camera and it's, that's good. And we're not going to put him on camera. His, her oldest son said he's here only for the emotional support of his mother. And her youngest daughter said she'd like to share how she feel about how her dad is treating not just her mother, also herself. I am an infamous Miss Ruddy Alive, where I am the most famous new supporter in the 757, guys. I'm going to have to readjust my camera. Y'all work with me while I bring this family story to you. And it's sad in me that these things are going on inside of... Um, homes not just black white puerto rican mexican and it, it goes on on a daily basis um and the fact that has it has it has no, not just the wife the mother also the children um it's not fair and um something do need to be done about it the way the women are left behind with these children putting your life how y'all doing today all right, all right. Everybody say Merry Christmas to y'all and Happy, Happy New Year's to you guys. Merry, Merry Christmas, Christmas to you. All right, let me make sure they can hear y'all. Can y'all hear them well when they speak? Can I get some hearts? Say your name. Priscilla. What about your name? Isabella. How about you? Alonzo. All right, can y'all hear them well? All right. Miss um, Priscilla, can you tell me why um, you called me out and you got in contact with me to share your story? Um, I was at... The day before Christmas, Christmas Eve. Yes, ma'am. Um, I was, I'm sorry. Christmas Eve, I was, I pulled into a parking lot to go into a store. And you noticed it was, it was me and you said you wanted to speak with me. Yes, because I see the work that you do and you're very passionate and you're honest and you're a straight shooter news reporter. And that's what people need nowadays. Um, and with my situation, I feel like you would be the best person to put it out. Um. I feel like I did reach out to Wavy News, I think, last year. Uh -huh. But I feel like they didn't want to touch it because of their father worked for the United States Navy. Okay. How many years have you been in the United States Navy? Um, 20, what? Like 23, 24. About 23 years. Okay. And this is your second time being married to the same person? Yes, ma'am. Um, we've been married twice. Because I do believe in marriage. I do believe in family. I believe that you're going to have your ups and downs. Um, so I really wanted to just make the marriage last and work. Also, I grew up without my father being present, which I know people say it's a violin, but it was reality. So I um, believed in all of that, and I wanted to make it work. So tell us what happened. Okay, this this is the second time around. The first marriage didn't work out. So y'all separate. Y'all decided, okay, we're going to make this thing work for the kids. We got three kids, and we're going to pull this thing back together and get married again. So you're back together. Life is like a lollipop, a lollipop song. Y'all doing great. And then what happened? Okay, and I want to go back on that part where we was actually divorced for like three years. Mm -hmm. um, the first year, of course, I wasn't over here. Father, my three children, you know. But the second year, I moved on. I was living the life. Like, without him, I moved back to Louisiana because that's where we're from. Um, but going into like the third and a half year, you know, I was with someone that I was like really serious about. Um, 
And because I have kids, I'm very cautious who I let around my kids, whether it's, you know, a friend girl or a man, like I'm very cautious. But I begin to get serious with this guy um, going into like the year and a half. So I introduced him to my kids and my kids really, Mrs. you know, they really liked him. Um, but I had to step back and say, God, if this is the one you have for me, I need you to make it known to me. So I could sit and like, hey, let's take a break or whatever. During that time, I didn't know this because their father and I, we didn't have any conversations. You know, he'll come into town. Mm -hmm. He would stay in my home. Okay. Was, you know, it was just about the kids. So time went on by and then he wound up calling the phone and said, hey, I'm coming in and I need to speak to you. First, I came to my mind, well, I, maybe he's going to get married and he want to have my blessings to let the kids be a part of it or whatever. Right. Which was fine. But long story short... I'm a very impatient person, so I was like, um, nah, you need to tell me now. Don't tell me nothing that's popping up telling me. Right. So that's when he started saying, um, well, God spoke to me. And the person he was with, he wanted to marry. But God said, I had already sent you your wife, mm -hmm. which was me. Okay. Now, keep in mind, I was fasting and praying, God, if this man is not revealing. So I knew we was in tune with God because we didn't know. Right. So we got back together, and I feel that the issue was... Yeah, you want God put us back together, but see the, the situation with him, he haven't fixed because he got a lot of, we all do, not just him. Okay. We both have things. Okay, so y'all get back together. Got back together. Okay. Got stationed in Washington State. Mm -hmm. Everything was fine and good. The issue with him, as long as he makes the money, he don't have to, I believe in eating dinner as a family. I believe in talking to the kids and doing it. He believed that woman cook, clean bed, you right. know, you don't have to say so, so I wasn't allowed to go outside the home and work, um, my job was the kids, which, you know, it's a blessing because the kids are very intelligent kids, honor roll kids, principal list kids, respectful kids, so I had that privilege to be there with them, but if so I, so you was basically forced to be a stay-at-home mom, oh, I was forced to be a stay-at-home mom, Okay, so you you okay? Here you are. You back in your marriage for the second time around. Mm -hmm. You and your husband get back together. He don't want you to leave out the house. He wants you to stay home and raise the kids. So he brought home the bacon and you took care of the house and cooked it. Right. But the All right. Time. So we go. Okay. So now y'all going through a situation because of the fact that the marriage is unbalanced because y'all having differences about how the kids should act or what yes ma'am because i believe in education first okay he want to be sports 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 first right you know i'm like well what if you like he had got dressed to the nba okay playing ball in the hood and then he want to do his slam dunk somebody need him whatever it's called and um his so your husband was drafted for the nba yes and he was playing basketball in the hood so when he got he got elbowed somehow, fell, broke his hip. Yeah. So there goes his career. Right. Um, but he was still able to get into the military because, you know, whatever. Um, my son giving me the mama, I don't talk about that. But, I mean, hey, we, we being honest, right, because, I mean, this is life. So I don't know. Like, as soon as he knew he was getting orders here, the light switch went off. Like, I do circle with lupus. Okay. I have AFib and SVT, which is a heart condition. So my lower bowel and my upper bowel chambers, um, like, some people can get um, pumped. If I go into a heart attack, I'm going to get shot. Not with the, it's like a certain special thing. So, um, soon as we got, as soon as we got ready to come back here, his whole attitude changed. My son got his phone and was seeing stuff. Um, it just, his whole demeanor changed out of nowhere. So, what was y'all, y'all was stationed in Washington State. Everything yeah. was going good. Everything was going good. We didn't understand. Like, I'm a licensed day minister. He's licensed day minister. We was doing a Sunday school out there. Like, we was doing... Don't know, like, this is the picture that we had taken, what, three years ago? Yes, ma'am. Three years ago, this is our last family picture. Okay, so you move here. You move here to Norfolk, Virginia. What happened from there? Um, he just went completely another different person. He began to be meaner to, he began to be mean to me, mean to the kids. He started going on, like, plenty of fish when she met the lady he's with now. Um, he began to go into dating apps and everything. Um, and I started doubting myself, what, is this something that I did wrong? Like, maybe my kids don't, um, need me, so I wound up attempting suicide. We was in Navy housing, um, because I was so distraught. Uh, you don't want me to talk about a whole son? But I mean, because there's other people out there, there's other people out there that is probably contemplating that. There's other people out there just thinking about that. So we got to be honest, right? 
If you don't want to be right here for now, you can step away, it's fine. But I have to be honest because I'm an honest person because you, I have read it to so many people that thought about these things. And So you say you thought about suicide. And so I attempted, I actually done it. You attempted suicide. So what happened with that? Um, only thing I know is that I woke up, um, let me go back. When I was in the hospital and I'm out working. So we see right now um, what when you discuss what happened to you and the things that happened to your son get really bothered. I went on and told him the excuses. I turned the camera away from him because okay. I seen that he was uncomfortable. Yeah. And I also went on and told him he can excuse himself. Um, what I'm seeing right now, um, when you speak about what you, what happened to you in the past, he get really tense. Um, he started to tap on the table. His knees started to like, you know, yeah. he was bumping his knees and things like that. He became very emotional. So what happened to you and between his father, it weighs on him heavily. I just yeah. want you to know that. Okay. Okay. Um, it does. It weighs on him heavily and um. You might want to get counseling for the kids as well, but you back with your husband. Um, both of y'all ordained ministers. Mm -hmm. I want to make sure we stick to the um, PowerPoints. Yeah. Um, you move here from Washington State to Norfolk, Virginia. Your husband start doing things outside the ordinary. Um, he start going on to different dating websites. He went on plenty of fish, and he met a young lady. Who is the young lady that he met? Her name is Carly. No, not, not last name. Oh, Her first name. Carly, last name starts with the U. Okay. She's a nurse here in Virginia. All right. Um, but keep in mind, I wasn't allowed to work. I couldn't really do nothing in the marriage. But, right. You know, um, but anyway, I attempted um, suicide, took a lot of pills, went inside my garage, turned the car on or whatever. Um, but I will say that's the worst mistake you can ever do. No one on this face of this earth is worth you taking your life away and you sitting in hell or whatever your religion may be. And your kids are going to be left alone. So not only do you hurt your, yourself, but you're hurting a person. You're hurting they want to know why your daughter is sitting here. They say, they say they don't think she should be sitting here. So let me here. tell you why she's sitting here. I'm the type of parent... They was there when it happened, and they knew what happened. They dad told them a whole nother story of what happened. So they had that they knew the truth. And I feel like if you don't, if your kids don't know the truth and they blindside, somebody can come back and tell them a whole lot of lies. The things that he done, they have been there and they seen it. So when I did come out of the hospital, we all have. It's okay. Them. We just speak as I mean, woman to woman. Yeah, if you prefer that. Yeah. Um, and then when you want to come back on. You can, okay. So do you want to say anything before you go? You want, you want to say. Do you want to say anything or you don't? Um, I'm going to talk about the subject that um, I didn't appreciate what my dad did because um, I could have lost my mom. And um, I didn't like what he did that because I was unfair. He should treat my mom with respect and all of us with respect and don't just get up and leave and they can do whatever he wants. When you have kids, a wife, as a family, he shouldn't do the stuff he does. Do you feel, do you feel... Do you feel comfortable sitting here? Do you want to sit here or do you want to leave? I can sit here. Okay. She want to sit with her mom's guys. So she's decision. She's well-spoken and she has decided she want to speak with her mom. So everybody was asked um, if they want to be in a video. Um, they wanted to be in a video. I advised that I didn't want them in a video, but, yeah, me too, but, but the kids me. wanted to be in a video. Um, so we're back to you. Yo, we get here, and I want to keep us on the PowerPoint. We get here, North of Virginia, the world's largest naval base. But it's almost not the world's largest naval base no more because they're saying on news that China is about to have the world's largest naval base. But back to you. We get here, he get on the dating websites. He found a woman now, he's having an affair. What happened from the time you found out he's starting to have an affair? Um, like I said, I did, you know, I tried to take my life. Um, and when you try to take your life, what did you do? Um, it was pills. It was going to a garage, turn up a addiction switch on, and all of that. What about the kids? You didn't think about the kids if you left no, the kids behind? That, at that time, I feel like because I'm already disabled, and who am I? You know, I really um, didn't have it to go on for myself because you know, just being a wife. Right. Maybe it'd be better if he was to get them because who am I? That's how I felt at that time. So you was broken? Yeah, I was very broken because second time to be married, second time, seeing like going to be divorced, like I started thinking, what is it? What is it me? Maybe because I'm disabled, maybe because I'm this, maybe because I'm that, but I realized there's nothing that a person done is that individual. Um, right. You know, and I will want to pause and say this here uh, before I finish the story. 
I have always spoken highly of their father. Right. Regardless of what he done, I'm always text messages, emails. I always have pushed them and tried to push them together because I feel like no matter what we got going on, we still have three kids. Right. But I wanted to share the story because no matter how much you push somebody to be in a kid's life, they're not going to do it. Right. So that's why my kids, they they wanted to get on. Like, we was like, no, 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 no. But they right. wanted to because people have to understand. And they shot me when they wanted to speak. Right. Because yeah. I was like, I didn't think y'all would be on. I would have had y'all putting on something, you know, whatever. Right. But um, it's the fact that we're, it's the, the kids are hurting. It's right. Christmas. Um, did, he buy, I, did he buy the kids anything for Christmas? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Um, but no. so you say he's been in the military for twenty three years. Yes, and like I said, this is him right here with his. Um, he's a chief in the military. Office. Yes, ma'am. It been in the military twenty three years. He have a family that he he murdered the mama once. They turned around and murdered her twice. Um, he been in the military twenty three years. He's a chief in the military, and he did not even buy neither one of the kids anything for Christmas. Not one thing for Christmas because he went on a dating website, allegedly called Plenty of Fish. And found him a woman on the website, um, got into a relationship relationship with another woman on the website, and abandoned his family allegedly. Um, and I will say because normally I'm a very this is this is this is a big thing for me to do, but everything like I said, we I'll say allegedly, but however I have you know it's I true. Don't have I have to say allegedly, yeah, right. but you know it's true. I right. got to say allegedly, but okay? Because I have all emails. I have text messages. Even when I reached out to the young lady, Carly, I have everything because the thing is, you're never going to call me a liar because I stand in my truth. I stood in my truth for so long and, and being hush mouth because of embarrassment, judgment of people. But looking at these celebrities that's going through the stuff that I went through, I realized, wait a minute, I'm just a, a normal Joe, but... I'm going through the same thing they went through. So let me tell my story. People gonna some people gonna relate and understand and some is gonna laugh about it. But it is it is reality. But um so. And the thing about it, and I want you to prepare yourself because people got opinions, like I said, everyone have one. But the thing about it is people, until it happened to them, they don't know oh, how you feel. And they got to understand that you were so hurt and devastated by this, you attempted to take your life. Oh, yeah. Right, because of the pain that you suffered yeah. from this. Um, so you, your husband get on the dating website. He meet this woman. Who is this woman by her first name? Her name is Carly. How long was they dating before you found out he was dating her? Um, A couple of months, maybe like three months. And then she wound up in... He got pregnant, supposed to be by him. He told the judge that that's a lie because she has a one-year-old. Well, she's two now, a two-year-old little girl. So he has a baby by her. Right. From my understanding, that it's his child because if you telling me you met her and the, the baby, she had the baby, that she'd be your daughter. But when we went to court, he told the judge, and, I, and it's not allegedly because I have all the court documents, um, that I didn't know I couldn't show that because it had, you know, okay. her full name and address and stuff. But um, he told the judge that I only have three children, and those are all three children. Okay, so is the child mixed? The, the lady is white? Uh, yeah, she's white, but her other child is mixed. But if they was to Google her name, because I think I'm a prime investigator, I'm nothing like you. But, hey, I did research on her. Her son, she had a man claiming that he was, she told the man was a child for seven years. But come to find out when I did research, she... Got a lot of people. She don't even know her first child is. Okay. Did you ever get the opportunity yeah. to speak with her about destroying your marriage? Oh, Did you ever get to speak with her? Yes. I would say reason why my child is here because she's some pictures of my children. And I had to say, hey, was somebody there when y'all was at the park with dad? That's how my kids can sit here and know about it. When I contact the lady, she was like, I know about you. I know about your kids. I'm on the phone like, this got to be fake, right? Mm -hmm. she, I said, send me. She told me what it was the park. She sent me pictures of my children at the park. She sent you pictures of your children at the park. Yes, and I can go to my message and I can pull it up and I will show. Um, she sent me pictures of my kids and, and I won't delete none of this stuff. It's time for me to phone. I won't get nothing new because it's here. She sent me pictures of my kids telling me intimate stuff about my children, about... He said I was dumb as a door or doorknob because I couldn't change the light fixture. Um, I couldn't get up there to change the light fixture. So she knew too much. But her exact words was, this is what I would never respect Carly. She said, I've been through the same thing you've been through. My husband cheated on me and we got divorced. But I want a father for my son. My son has felt in love. With so him. when you find out when he gets, let me get you to hear. 
When you find out that your husband on Planet of Fish, you found out he's having an affair with another woman. Whether she's white or black, it does not matter. Puerto Rican or Mexican. Um, what do you say to him once you find out? And how did you find out? Um, because we have always had each other codes and everything. Uh -huh. And he sort of just moved different. He's just started moving really, really different. Um, and I confronted him on, he lied. Of course you're going to lie. What was the first thing that you seen that you knew he was dating someone? Well, because in his phone, the text message between her and him. What was some of the things they were saying? About how they were going to meet up again and how she loved him and how he loved her. And I'm think, thinking like, wait a minute, but... That's not what you're putting out. So I confront him, and he don't like to be he don't like to be confronted. So when you confront him, you get, you take the phone, you go to him, you say, "Hey, what's going on? I see you texting another woman. Who is she? And what's going on? What was his answer?" He denied it. He denied it. Okay, so then he denied it. Then yeah. do you contact the woman? Yes, I, and that's when I spoke to her, and she started telling me how her son loves him, and she want to fuck for her son. But that's not my issue. And that's when I did research because I felt like, okay, well, if did you ask her to leave your husband alone? Oh yes, I did. What was her response? And, well, I was the first time I was like angry, like, well, that's fine. I don't want him anyway, you know. And then, but I was still hurt, and I did still love him at that time. Mm -hmm. And I will say, you know, so that's when I called her back and said, you know what, I do love him. And I started saying, what type of woman are you to be? If you went to this with your, you know, husband and stuff, you ready to walk away? You still want to be here? You sure? Come on, just say Oh, you want to say something? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, she want to say something else. Okay. You want to say something else? You want to wait till you want to move that? I'm going to come until she finished. Just so okay. Okay. Um, and again, I know y'all said, why are the kids are still here? Um, soon she's going to walk away. But they have voice because guess what? It's other families with children that's in the inside. And people want to hush the kids and say the kids don't have nothing to say. But the kids are hurting too. They have to go through some tedious. But I will just say, uh, she and I talked on several occasions. Her thing was, it didn't matter. I reached out to her. I reached out to her, her mom. Everybody was just like, it doesn't matter. It was just about her and him. Um and that's how that part went. Okay, so then you found out she's pregnant. How, how did it? How did it? When you? How did you find out she was pregnant? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a mini investigator. That's all I. You know, I can't give my sources away. Right. But I did find out she was pregnant. She had the baby that's in terror. Okay. Um, and when March the first, um, I can't say the child name, right? No, I don't say child name, but I don't say the baby name. So over him. Um, when I find out, I confronted him on it because what made that most important to me was. You're making a new family with somebody else when you're still we're still legally married and you're not doing nothing with our children. Right. I will say this: I have always put him on a pedestal when I will say this now. For us being a provider, he was an excellent provider. He made sure that he provided. What What is so important that you share your story today? What What makes it important that you come on Facebook and you share with us? Why did What made you want us to listen to your story? I wanted people to understand that. You're not alone. It's so many military, and even if you take the word military out, just men and women are out there in a relationship where you have been a stay-at-home spouse. You have raised the children. You're educated. You don't have that much education because you couldn't. Like, I stopped in my associate's degree. Like, right, you know, I stopped in my associate's because I had to be at home. I couldn't do that much in and out the hospital. Um, so I want to let you know that you are not alone out there. People have this mindset that the military... Is um they don't believe in adultery. That's a lie. Why you say that? Because his command right now, he's military now, and he is on um the Eisenhower. I went to his command, explained what was going on, how hey, can we get some type of help? They said you can't force somebody to get counseling, even though we was in counseling, you couldn't force him to get counseling. You can't force as long as his job performance is good. So I want other military people to know that anybody else but just the military. Please stop thinking because your spouse is committing adultery that they're going to back them up and it's an open and shut case. It's not that easy. He makes over $8,000 something a month, but he only, by the law of the state of Virginia, he's only allowed to pay the um, child support just $1,400 a month. That's more than my rent, you know. Um, that's less than your rent. Yeah, that's less than my rent. I'm sorry, because my rent where I live at is like 16 a month, you right. know. So you're getting less than your rent, and you still got to feed the kids and everything, utilities, clothes, and everything right. else. And the core paperwork that I got actually um, a couple of days ago, he said because I'm the custodial parent that he don't has to have, he doesn't have to help with um, child care. He doesn't help to do this. So only thing we share is joint like a thing in hospital. But I'm a custodial parent, so I ask, what well, can you help me? You know, while I'm working, can you help this and help that? His answer is always no. Wow. If, okay, now I'm gonna back this thing up because I know right now 
you know, when you, you hear, you got so much to say and there's so much you want to get out there. So it's going to get all jump up because right. it feel like I'm rushing you, but I'm trying to get you right. to the key point so it won't be a okay. run on. So I'm going to lead and direct for a minute. If I'm wrong, correct me. Yes, ma'am. I'm married. I lead the man that I'm with because I ask God, if this man I'm with ain't the one for me, then show me a sign. Your husband call back, calls you and say he wants you back. You leave the man that you with to go back with your husband that you married already before. Now, and divorce. Now you remarry him again. Yes, you put your whole heart and soul into him. You thinking this time it's going to be right. Your kids going to have a father in their life. Y'all get stationed to Washington State. Y'all have it. It's okay right now. The marriage is going pretty well. United States military says that y'all need to come to Norfolk, Virginia to do some more time here in Norfolk, Virginia on the Eisenhower ship. Um, he get here, things start to change. His behavior ain't the same. You find out that he's having an affair. He's he's on dating websites looking for other women. Other women. He found another woman, a white one, white lady that he start dating. She get pregnant within that year. She have a baby. He walks out you and your kid's life. He leave y'all with absolutely nothing. You contact the military. You ask them for help. What can y'all do to? Help my help me get my husband to help support us. What can y'all do to make my husband come back home? The military says nothing we can't do. Long as he performed his job right, allegedly. And at this point they said to you, his job performance is well. How did that make you feel as a woman when the military let you down and did not stand up for you? I feel bad because just like he took an oath when he became chief, we had to do an oath also. That military creed, it talks about family while they're out to sea. We're at the home front on land and we're holding it down. Just like he's holding it down for the country out, I'm holding it down here at the home. And I feel like it should have been something else better to help us. But it's not. It's not. Like I said, he made me knowing I have lupus and a heart conditions for his you know, people ask, well, aren't you going to be able to get the medical? No, because they don't add up the 20 plus years we've been married. They add up this time. I walk away with that I'm not getting uh, spousal support. People ask, well, can't you get like food stamps? Can't get food stamps because they say you're over the limit, even though I'm not over. They look at the fact that the rent. Um, and so my rent, like I say, the price with my rent. Total I get home, he pays, it's out of his allotment, so the allotment goes straight to his, you know, to the rent. So what I bring home, what he sent to my account each month is 700 and some change. So that's the only thing he actually put in my bank account. The rest goes to the rent. Wow. So how much he sent to the rent? Um, The rent is 16 or 15 something. So he paid the whole 16? For now. Once the divorce is going to be final, that's it. Only thing, only, I'm not going to get the extra money. That's it. So right now he's giving you sixteen hundred plus seven hundred. No, no, no. Right now is um twenty, twenty or twenty two. So he's paying yeah, fifteen, seven. Yeah, twenty two. So right now he's paying you twenty two mm -hmm. um hundred dollars a month. Yes, ma'am. Okay, to cover the rent and help out with the kids. Yes. But y'all divorce is about to be finalized. And your thing is, your thing is like once the divorce is finalized, your money gonna get almost cut in half. It's just gone, right? Is gone, but um, I'm not getting. I can afford a lawyer to fight for me for spousal support, so I don't have spousal support. Um, and I can't fight to say that hey, this is how we've been living this whole time, right? So we have been accustomed to this. I know his thing is I have to live, I want you to live too. But remember, we've been living like this, and I haven't been, I've been a stay at home wife all these years, right? So expecting just to jump up. And recently, I was in the hospital, I had a bad lupus flare, um, where I wind up. Going into um, anaphylaxis and everything, right. don't know what happened. My whole body from head to toe, I was, and I was sending pictures on um, with that. Um, he didn't come help with the kids or nothing. My mom moved down here. He wanted her to move down here. But uh, my thing is, if you know that you, let me get on my feet. Right. Help me with the kids. Right. I'm 40 years old, a cashier, but I haven't been to work because of the COVID. Right. COVID, COVID, whatever, you know. Right. Um. And my thing is, why take away? He even told me they can move to somewhere, move move to North, move to somewhere it's cheaper, um, and take them to another school. My thing is, these children are so used to bouncing around and mm -hmm. around every time he and I have a, they're a good school. They wouldn't know, can you get legal aid? Uh, no. Legal aid doesn't cover, um, the, if it's, if you're not an agreement, legal aid doesn't cover it. They wouldn't know, um, can you apply for disability? That's going to be my goal. I pray I can. I had disability before we got married, but once we got married, 
No, when we got divorced the first time and I tried for disability, they denied me. So when someone said the energy you are putting into him, you can just boss up and move on. Hello, somebody, because that's going to be my goal. But I want other people to know, remember, I'm not here like, woe is me, but I want people to understand that you're not alone. Someone said um, life throws challenges all the time. And um, all the time. So that's my, it's, that's my say. They should be looking for a cheaper place to live like those us a challenge, challenges all the time. Right. So let me ask that person that. Mm -hmm. If you're always used to taking your kids, bouncing your kids around and around, and the kids ask, came to me and said, Mom, we love where we at. We have to move again. Keep in mind, like I say, I'm a cashier. So it's not like I'm just not Sit doing home. nothing. Right. right. I'm not just You work. Saying, right. You I work and you got two disabilities. You got right. a problem with your heart. And I have lupus. Let us know what lupus yes. is, because some people don't know. Okay, so lupus is an autoimmune. Um, it messes with your skin. I have, and the one I have, it messes with my organs and stuff. So I have discord lupus, meaning, like I said, recently I was in the hospital. So, and on top of lupus, I also have polymyositis, which is an inflammation of the muscles. So I have a double, because uh, my dad died. He had lupus. So, um, so that's what I have. And then I also have AFib, upper valve and lower valve. So it's like, um... You know, yeah, so I'm the devil with me. Um, but I want to let people know, I'm not just sitting there relying on him like I have always done. I make, make nothing. I make very little. I'm a 40-year-old cashier. However, I still go out there and work and do it. But I want people to know that, yes, like I like the person boss up. My goal is to boss up. But it's people out there might not able to boss up at that point. But and probably thinking about taking their life, but it's not worth it. That's what I want people to know. This is all about that this is what happened to me. Stop relying and saying the Navy going to back me up. If you a woman and a man out there, date somebody in the military, please better yourself in that marriage. No one is promised to you, no matter how much they say they are. They're not promised to you. Right. And They're the military, and your point to show, um, to share today is that the military is not, a lot of people think, oh, he in the military, he got to take care of me. The military is not going to make him. No. The military is not going to make them or something like whether they think it's not their job. But if you've been doing it all these years and wouldn't allow me to do nothing, why? Because you're ready to walk away. You walk away from everything. And it's not he and I don't have to work out. But it's the kids. And I know my daughter want to say something because y'all don't understand. Um, these kids are very vocal. And remember, the kids are the ones that's hurting the most because I don't talk about their dad. But when they come to me and start talking about their dad to me and how they feel, and I tell him, go sit in the council, he don't. So I'm on her. Somebody say you're exactly right. When you move around a lot, you don't establish roots. Um, she also, guys, let me go ahead and slow her down because she all over the place because she wanted to get everything in. Yeah. And I want to make sure I get the questions in, and it's good to break her up so she won't have a random one conversation. We want to get to key points. Um. Y'all got to understand her situation. She's been married to him for 20 years, minus three. So her whole life has been following his military career. So just because he decided to go out there and have an affair with another woman, get another woman pregnant, leave his house and his three kids, why should she not continue to live the same lifestyle that her and her kids always been living? He's the one that decided to walk out the marriage. He's the one decided to leave the kids behind, allegedly. And he's moving on with his life, and he want to take the finance with him. He didn't want her to work for 20 years. Um, he already knew she had lupus, and he, had, he knew she had immune um, disease. He knew the vulnerable state he was leaving her in. And he knew that he really, 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 he called their mother down here to help him with her while she was in the hospital. And once the mother got here, he got up and dipped out and left her and the kids and moved in with the um with this other new woman and her baby and her other son that she already had. So he just left her his kids behind. This Christmas, he's a chief in the military. He ain't by these kids no Christmas. Regardless if you pay your child support or not, these kids still deserve to know their father love him and he should have still bought them a Christmas gift and Christmas presents, you know. So that's why she's hurting. You know, we got to really look at the story for what it's worth. Right, it's a pandemic. I shouldn't have, and I think that's what made the lupus flare that bad and I went into the hospital because I was dealing with, you got a pandemic going on, I have to worry about my utilities, worry about my rent, 
the little money I make in my job is enough to stay afloat. But then people keep saying, a lawyer, I can't, I can't afford a lawyer. So then I worried about this paperwork. I keep getting the paperwork from his lawyer, keep sending me paperwork, stuff I didn't respond back to because I don't understand the terminology. I'm dealing with all that. And I'm so proud to it all weighed on to me and it just made me have that bad flare up, you know. Right. Um, so you say everything going through the stress and make it cause you. Right. I'm worried about if I know, God forbid, I prayed, if anybody was to get, um, I get, you know, the COVID. I know I say COVID, I think it's COVID, whatever. Mm -hmm. But if I was to get that, I feel like it would wipe me out. But I have my faith in God that my stuff and none of my kids get it. And they're like, they're trying to push the kids to go back to school. I'm scared for them to go. That's another thing on my mind. What if my kids go back to school and they get it? What if they get it and break it home to me and I get it? Or my mom get it? She's an older lady. So all this stuff is going. And then I'm still have to deal with going to court, which they made us go inside the court um, two months ago for this divorce stuff. And all, and then that's everything started mm -hmm. happening. Everything right. happening. So I'm just panicking with all of that. Um, right. But the divorce is going to be final. Right. Which is, you know, that's what it is. But, but once the divorce is final, your income gets sliced. My income gets completely sliced like the old saying you know you gotta rob peter to pay paul mm -hmm. you know i'm not robbing anybody because i'm trying to go to jail but i'm just saying like i'm literally gonna have to figure something out i know people say well move and start back over but my kids have been moving so long right and i even said just at least help me with the rent part like help Right. And if you people say, well, he shouldn't have to do that, y'all want to be divorced, it's done. But all those years he's been in the military, I've been right there with him. And right. So y'all did the military together. Oh, yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, She looked like she wanted to say yeah, something, she sweetheart. She wanted to say something. Yeah. <laughs> Yes, love. What would you? What is that you would like to say to the people? Cause they want to know. The people want to know why is you here? What? What? what they want to know why are you here? Why are you sitting here? Y'all shouldn't be talking like that in front of the kids. Why is she there? Was you asked to leave? Have you been asked to not to be on camera? And, yes, we have been asked. What did you decide? And what did you say you wanted? I want to stay. And why is it that you want to stay here? Cause I want to speak about my dad and how he's been mistreating us and how that's not fair and how you know he should stop. So you have watched for the children that have probably been going through and how kids yes. feel and say how you do your outlet with your stuff. You do it. Let us speak. Okay. Okay. So what is it that you want to um say out here? And what if your daddy was right here right now and you had the opportunity to speak to your father directly, speak to your dad in his camera in case he's looking and he's watching and tell him how the decisions he made affect you and your brothers. But no, he's not really there. He comes when he want to come and see us. He's supposed to come every other weekend, but he doesn't really want to come. He comes when he wants to come. And then he says, oh, I'm coming, but he never shows up. And then he gets angry, and then he wants to talk about mom all the time when we're with them. And he's just being very rude. And then, yeah, he left mom, but he still should be a part of our life, too, not just leaving us and giving us little crumbs. He just throws us stuff and think we're just supposed to be quiet about it and don't speak our opinion. And when we do speak our opinion, he wants to say, oh, stop talking, stop talking. And over the summer, we were at the movie theater, I think it was last summer, and so I saw him texting someone named Carly and I confronted him in the car. And um, he just said, you shouldn't be looking at my phone. This is an adult phone. You shouldn't be looking at my phone. And he got real angry and that dude was supposed to go shopping or something. He said, oh, I'm not taking you anywhere because he got angry. And then he never wants to help out with my school stuff or anything. I had asked him over in September. We went school shopping and stuff. And he really didn't want to get me the stuff I needed. He really just got the stuff, you know, I didn't ask for. I said, I need this for school, not for school. He said, you don't really need none of that stuff for school. And I was just like, yes, I do. And so then I had, I played vi viola. And so my mom was going to pay half. And just he was just supposed to pay that front money. And my mom said she was going to pay month to month. But he didn't want to. He didn't want to pay the money for it. He said, "Oh, I don't want to pay the money. That's too much. Your mom can pay. She can pay. I pay the rent." And so then, also this this summer, he told us that he already had the rent done. We don't have to move. And then we said, "Thank you, though. Thank you for not making this move or nothing like that." And he said, "Okay." And then during court, he was just like, "Oh, you guys have to move." But then he said he wasn't going to make us move, and that made me feel sad, angry, because. Why did he do that? He said he wasn't going to make us move. 
but then he went behind our backs and just did a whole nother thing and wants us to move and do different things. And we've been moving forever and we finally find a good school, a good place, and just wants us to up and leave again. And that's unfair. And so I do other stuff you know, just to keep my mind busy. I have a counselor. Um, I do drama, I do different stuff, you know, just to keep my mind busy. And now that um, I'm in fifth grade and I really want him to be there for my graduation, I remember, I think it was like during last summer, a couple of summers ago, I cried because I was really sad because, you know, I want my dad to be there me growing up because he won't be able to see me grow up. And I just want him to be there to grow up. But if he's not going to be a good person, he's not going to see me grow up, that makes me, you know, really angry. And I cried, and my brothers and my mom and my grandma were all there to help me. And it's my, you know, I'm in fifth grade now, but he won't be at my graduation because I already told him to be at my birthday. He didn't show up for my birthday. He bought me gifts, but that was like two weeks after my birthday. He said, oh, I'm going to be working on your birthday. He always says that for my birthday. And, you know, it just makes me sad. It just doesn't make sense. Someone shouldn't be doing that to their kids. Someone shouldn't be doing that to their family in general. That's not how a person should be treated. That's not how anyone should be treated. Everyone needs to be treated good. Wow. That was powerful. That was so heart touching. It just brings tears to my eye. I mean, you speak and everybody say you speak well. They want to know how old are you? Yes. I'm 10 years old. She's 10 years old. And y'all seen it for yourself where she spoke this out of her own mouth. How the decisions her father has chosen has really bothered her. She said to you, Dad, she said, you promised her you was going to be there for her. You promised them that they wasn't going to have to move out their house and you lied to them. You promised them, she said. She said, when we went to court, you told us y'all got the move. She said, you made me feel as though you lied to me. You said you were going to come see me for my birthday and you didn't show up. But you did send me a gift two weeks later. But it was two weeks later. Why two weeks later? What about Christmas? What did he get you for Christmas? He didn't get anything for Christmas. He didn't get nothing. My mom signed the Christmas list and he still didn't get us anything. How did that make you feel, the father that you've been with all your life, always loved you, always provided for you? How did that make you feel that he met another, so he started another family, and then he just forgot about y'all? How, how, how did that make you feel on Christmas Day? That made me feel really sad because I was the only girl, and he said, I always said you would be my only girl, and he treated me, he always called me princess, he called me different names, he would treat me on a pedestal, but then he just left, and then we made another family. And then he just, you know, changed. He just changed out of nowhere. It was just that one point in life he just changed. It started to act different and different mm -hmm. until when he just left and started another family. It was just signs adding up that he was starting to change. Well, but can I, I excuse me, there's people, let me just, do have I ever told y'all not to love y'all dad, um, not to call y'all dad? How do you, do you feel that I don't want y'all to love your dad and don't be around your dad, y'all dad? How do you feel about that? What do you think? What's your opinion about that? Um, you, you always ask us, do you want to call your dad? Do you want to text him? And we, we always say no because, Lord, I, I want to text him, but I know he's not going to respond. He's going to be rude. Alonzo. And why would I um, want to text him if he's not even showing up to my things with being nice or even doing nice things for us? Yes, he pays the brand. He does money for us. But, I mean, he's not really there. I mean, someone can always throw money and give gifts and stuff like that. But it means nothing if you're there. Right. And let me pause. This is why they chose to be on here. Because y'all missed the point. It's about time, too. It's not just about gifts. So when I say other people that's going through this here and they have little kids, sit down and listen to what your children are saying. She want time. They want her kids. Her school has watch dogs. Well, he talks with dad and I ask him to do it and he and said, he oh, it. I have to go to work. He always says I have to go to work or I'm busy. Right. And it's time for you to see him in the street. He wasn't at work, you know. So that's what I'm saying. The children have a voice too and we need to understand that. I still speak highly of their dad. I still say try to call them. I want to run and lock up in the room for they don't go with him. I will but he never speaks highly of her when we're with him. He said, well, I didn't leave. I just left your mom, not y'all. She just stopped lying on me. And you always say, mom speaks highly of you. She never speaks down on him because, you know, she doesn't have to speak down on him. She always speaks highly of him. But he always wants to drop her out and speak down on her. And that's unfair. I mean, treat others the way you want to be treated. She treats, you know, talks about you guys well. Talks about him well. If it's, okay, before we go, it was one thing you could say to your dad. You look directly in the camera. And you can speak directly to your dad. What would you want to say to him? I would say I don't like how he just up and leave. He didn't just leave mom. 
left all of us, and he shouldn't do that. And I just don't want gifts. I don't want money. I want to spend time with him, actual time, his real time to talk with me and spend time with me and do stuff we both like and just have fun with him for once and bring back memories that I didn't have when I was younger. Wow. And you heard it here first. Before Wavy News 10, Channel 3, and also Channel 13 News. This for all the dads out there, if you're listening. They say they don't want your money. They want your time. Spend time with me, Daddy. Make memories with me, Daddy. I am the infamous Miss Rhoda Young Life, where you have not just broken the heart of your wife, you have also broken the heart of your children. She said that you used to call me your princess. I was your princess, your only little girl, your only little girl. You call me princess, and now you lie to me. You won't come to school with me. You won't pick me up, and when I call you, you're mean to me and rude to me. She say all she wants is your love and to make memories, and that's it. <sighs> Thank you, sweetheart. You have a blessed day, okay? Thank you. You did a great job. Thank you. Moms, mom, if I came here one way, I leave here another way. I came in here one way. Lord have mercy. I'm leaving here another way. This child has spoken well. She have gave us great understanding of what the children go through in a broken home. Only thing people think about is the wife. Move on. Get it together. Pick yourself up by your skirt tail. But you, mama, have showed us diversity. It ain't about me. Yeah, I love him. Yeah, I love him. But what about my children? People didn't even understand at the beginning why the kids was here. Now we know why. It is about the children. They do have a voice, and they need to be heard. I am the infamous, most famous news reporter in the 757. Your daughter has changed the mind of many people. We get it now. We get it now. We get it now. What about the kids that you destroy? If you can look in this camera and tell your soon-to-be ex-husband something, Lay it all out on the table. I will say, put however you feel about me away, which I have always said, and focus on our children. I am not your enemy. I don't hate you. I might dislike a lot of things that you have done, but God bless us with three intelligent children that I want us to be able to raise and grow together. We don't have to be together, but what I mean by that is they should be able to call you and talk to you. You should be able to pick them up, not just take them to GameStop, Walmart, and back home or to the movies, but spend time with them. Don't make it so difficult telling them that you're going to promise them one thing and do the next. Be there for them. And I will say this, being there for them is also being a part of being there for me as their mother. Not together, but coming to their events. You missed our middle son graduation, fifth grade graduation. You missed our oldest son, eighth grade graduation. I was willing not to even stick, stand by them, sit in the back. But you missed out all of that. Be there for the children. Don't make it hard. Don't do that. Don't take away... Move somewhere. Don't take away everything because remember, you told the kids one thing and doing the next. So I would say, I don't have to put my mouth, I don't have to put my mouth or my hand on you. You're doing it yourself. But I wanted other people to know that you are not alone out there. You're not alone as other people. Let your voice be heard in the most important voice. It's the little one's voice because they're the next generation and they have a voice. That's what I would say. Step up and be the man that I know you can be, regardless of what you got going on. Be there for your first family. Wow. You ain't say your only family. You say your first family. Right. Because he has a new life and that's fine.
but just don't neglect your first family. Wow. Your children. Wow. Wow. Because I will say this. You know my health situations. And when I was in that hospital in the intensive care unit at Portsmouth, you could have asked my mom, hey, Miss King, can I help you with anything? You know, let me come get the kids. Let me do this. But your main concern is right now, I ain't going to be that time the boys and they can be around her. Her don't even, it's not about her. It's about these children. Wow. That's all I want you to realize. Wow. You know what hurt me the most, guys? If I can speak, if it, I'm going to turn the camera to me for a yes. second. And I'm going to um, be ready to um, pull this mask down for one second. What hurt me the most um, when I heard this thing, I raised four kids. I never had none of my kids' father to be there for them. No, not one. Um, but I never spoke to my children about how it affected them. I feel now I cheated my kids. I I was strong enough to move forward. And I thought being a strong woman moving forward was good enough, not looking backwards. I never asked my kids, how are you doing? I was selfish. I was selfish. I was selfish. I would apologize to my kids. I want to apologize to you guys. <clears throat> it was never about my kids. But it's all about your kids with you. I didn't care if they didn't call. I didn't care. But I never asked my kids if they care if they didn't call. I thought I was doing something because I was acting like I was the mother and the father. My son, he's in the military. He came here. He said to me, my father never sent me a Christmas gift. My father never gave me a birthday gift. He said that to me at 22 years old. I didn't know he was bothered by those things. I thought I could replace the fact that he didn't have a father by giving them everything I put my hands on. I felt like my kids don't need their dad. I gave them. I provided for them. More than a mother and father could. But the whole time, my kids was hurting because I didn't sit down with my kids like you do with your kids and speak to them and let them speak to me. See, we need to start being judgmental. And we need to start building a relationship with our kids like she have with hers. Because she have a good relationship with her kids. Because you say by the way her kids speak. Whether we like it or not, it's not for us to like. They're her kids. Has she raised her kids? And I think she do a stand-up job. Her kids feel free to express themselves. So she know what's going on in her kids' mind. I didn't. I thought I did. I found out today, that young girl taught me something. I ain't know nothing. Only thing I was thinking about, me. Showing these fools I can do it without them. I never knew how it affected my kids until I listened to that young lady. Ten years old, scooped me right here in Virginia Beach. Y'all about to talk to y'all kids and listen to your kids. You guys out there, you about to get it right. And that's why our kids are messed up in these streets. You, that little girl just gave us the answer. She just gave us the answer. Why we got so many dead black kids and dead juveniles in the street. She gave us the answer. Because they hurting too. For you. They growing up angry. And they growing up bitter. And resentful. Because of you. I was wondering. Why these kids keep doing what they do. Because of you. That 10 year old girl that everybody said don't need to be right here. Told us all something. They need both of us. They need the mother. They need the father. They need both of us. Y'all better get it right before it's too late. Just last night. December the 25th. Between Church Street, Princess Anne Road, Church Street, Tower Drive. Somebody killed somebody's son last night and probably was one of your kids. Because your butt won't dare. They help console that child when he was out there by himself, raising himself with his mother. They need you. Those are the ingredients. Fag your kids. Love your kids, even if you're not with their mother. Start using that as an excuse not to be a father. 
That's the cheapest excuse on in the book. I don't mess with my kids. I don't want to mess with the mama. I don't mess with my kids. I don't want to mess with the mother. That's the same old love song they've been say, singing for the last 20 decades. That's an excuse not to be around your kids. That's an excuse not to be a father. We're not going to listen to that excuse no more. She said, Dad, I wanted you for all my birthday to come see me. Not your gift. Two weeks later, Dad, I wanted you at my program. He didn't show up. These kids are crying out for their fathers. And it's not a black or a white thing. It's a man thing. Is there anything else while we're here? Anybody else like to share? You a minister. Can you take us out in prayer? I would. Um, and you asked, is this something I do want to say? This uh -huh. one thing. Um, be mindful. It can be a man or woman going through this, but my two sons have. I was trying to I was trying to say something. My two sons um, have, you know, from talk to their dad, feel that women are disposable and women don't matter. Matter. And guess what? Whether you're a man or a woman, you matter. Remember what you speak. Our children are listening. Oh, my oldest son. I don't want to come on. You want to say something? What? He just want to support. <laughs> he always hug you. He just want to be there for you. Um, but um, and they look just like they did. You they know? do. So you know, but I just want to just tell people. Um, make sure when you when you speak down on the mom or you speak on the dad, you're showing you your sometimes the girls can grow up and think that all men are like this. Or he, they may think all oh, women are useless or nothing like this. But we all matter. Um, and like I tell you, y'all dad do love y'all. Can't take that away. And y'all have to love him. Get mad when I try to force y'all, but it doesn't matter, you know. And he's going on 17 next month. So, like, I, you know. That's so sad. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry y'all have to go through this. This is a broken heart of family. He broke your heart. He didn't just broke his wife. He broke all his kids. All his kids. Shame on you, chief. Shame on you. Shame on you, all behind sex. You left this family, all behind sex. All behind sex. All behind going on a, way, a dating website, allegedly. I am an infinite misroad in your life where it saddened me to watch how another black man destroy another black family. You, these are our kids that we're, these are our fucking kids that you're breaking. These are good kids. Good kids. Respectable kids. You should be a stand-up dad to these kids. Mom, take us out. You ordained minister. In Lord, prayer. Lord, I just ask you right now, Father, for the people who are out there that may have gone or will go through what we're going through to let them know that they are not alone. That it's okay to share your story because it's not the end of the book or the chapter, whatever you're going through, that we have to put pride aside because we know it's a proper thing to let people into your world, but you're not the only one that's in this world. Take the time, Lord, to help people to sit down and talk to their children, not just how you're doing, but no, really, how you doing? How you doing inside? How you doing mentally and physically? Sit down at the dinner table. If you don't have a table, sit down somewhere and eat with your children. See if they're really eating, you know. See how their health is doing. Step out the norm and talk to people that you might not ever talk to to see how can they help you, Father. And Lord, I just pray and touch every man and woman out there that's in a relationship or married, Father, to let them know if you feel that it's time to walk away, don't just walk away and really walk away. Pause, but be there for your family for your children because God is so many kids right now that's hurting that's taking their life and having all these thoughts have to go into the streets with men or women just because that's how they feel self-love but Lord I ask you right now father for that young boy who's 
hearing this here prayer father that he feel he had to go you know into porn or using women or using men father no love yourself just because you feel that mom don't love me or dad don't love me that is somebody more higher than mom and dad that love them god and that's you and father for to the ones who may not Believe in you, Father, the way that I do, whatever their religion or whatever it may be, that somebody love them, Father, Lord. That we're not here to pass judgment, Father, but to encourage and uplift each other. And, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, this prayer is just for me and my children, Father, to touch their dad right now, wherever he's at, whatever he's doing, whoever he's doing it with. That it's not about her. It's not about him. It's not about me. It's about these children, Father, that... He can be the father that I know he can be for these children, Father. Because they're looking, Father. The children are looking, Father. And I just thank you, God, for Miss Rhoda. She is a blessing to so many people, Father. And she's a genuine person. And I just ask you, God, just to bless us all, Father. In Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name, God. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. He said, when two or more come into a grieving, it shall be done in Jesus' name. And it shall be done. The Lord is my strength and my salvation. For whom should I feel? The Lord is the strength of my life. For whom should I be afraid? For when the wicked minded enemies and my foes come upon me to eat up my flesh, they should all tumble and fall. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. amen, and amen. Until we meet again, I am ready your life. Love thy children. Love thy children. It was only lent to us for a certain amount of time. It's just like a bird. Eventually, we have to push him out the nest and watch them fly away. And when our kids shall fly away, we want them to be powerful people with positive mindsets. No regrets. No regrets. Facebook, good night.